Stoicism is not the secret. It's not magically wishing that something is, is true. There is no power of intention. If you want to make a million dollars, you will not suddenly make a million dollars. You have to do something about it, right? So what do you do? How do you, how do you guard your perceptions, but then take action by them? Dwight D. Eisenhower, I think, is a wonderful example of this. As the Nazis overwhelmed Europe with the Blitzkrieg, which was a fundamental change in modern warfare. And, and the Blitzkrieg attack is actually designed to exploit the flinch of the enemy. The idea is if you throw enough firepower and you throw enough speed at an enemy, they will break, that you will be able to plunge into their territory, and they won't be able to catch up, right? This is essentially how the Blitzkrieg attack works. So as the, as the German panzer divisions uh, wreaked havoc through Europe, this exploit became sort of a feedback loop. And shortly after the invasion of Normandy, the Nazis launched what is the largest sort of counteroffensive that they'd ever done. It's about 200,000 troops. They're being launched at the Allies. And the Allies really have nowhere to go, right? They can't get back on their boats and go home. And so for the first real time, Eisenhower is forced to examine this strategy. He's forced to examine why the Blitzkrieg is working. And he assembles all his generals at, a, at, the, at the Allied headquarters in Malta. And it's this magnificent scene He's, he strolls into the conference room. All his generals are sitting around the table and he says, the present situation is to be regarded as opportunity for us and not disaster. There will be only cheerful faces at this conference table. And again, this isn't just his perception. This isn't just how he's looking at it. But what he's realized is that if the allies could bend instead of break, if they could if they could allow the enemy advance to happen, but then encircle it from the rear, they, they could exploit a fundamental opportunity, or I guess you could say fatal flaw in the effectiveness of the Blitzkrieg. And so that's what the Allies do, first at the Follies Pocket, and then later at the Battle of the Bulge. These are critical victories. What looked like an overwhelming counteroffensive becomes the two of the major victories that assure Ally uh, success in Europe. They open up the path to Berlin. And so, so it's, it's how Eisenhower is able to look at this opportunity and then do something about it that creates, that creates the advantage from the obstacle, right? And Epictetus is saying every event has two handles, one by which it can be carried and one by which it can't. If your brother does you wrong, don't grab it by his wrongdoing, but use the other handle. And that's what Eisenhower did. He grabs it by the other handle and suddenly this, this uh, adversity becomes an advantage. And Amelia Earhart is a, a similar figure who I find deeply inspiring. Her strategy, uh, as she had painted on the side of her plane, always think with your stick forward. There needs to be momentum. And when you slow down, especially in the air, this is where you lead to a crash. And Amelia Earhart's biggest and most admirable decision was as a young woman, it's the 1920s, uh, women had just earned the right to vote. She's working as a, as a social worker and she gets a call and, and uh, a donor had been willing to fund a, a transatlantic flight with a woman. And this would be a, a record setting flight. But there was a catch, right? The catch is uh, Amelia is not going to be able to fly the plane. She's not even going to be the co-pilot. She has to sit in the back with the map. She can be the navigator. Um, and not only that, the other two pilots are going to get paid and she's not. She basically has to sit there. As she, as she says on the flight, I was basically uh, about as helpful as a sack of potatoes. But so, so when you get that offer, what do you do? Your ego wants to say, no, I don't want that opportunity. It's not on my terms. It's offensive. Um, that's probably what I, what I might have done at a, at a certain point in my life. But what does Amelia Earhart do? She says yes. And the reason she says yes is this idea of thinking with your stick forward, that what, what I need is a, a, just a tiny opening to put my foot through. And so she does the flight. She becomes a celebrity despite her minor role in the thing. And about five years later, she's able on her own to do the first female solo transatlantic flight and becomes a, a world-renowned aviator. And so it's, it's this conquering of the ego that allows us to see opportunities where others might have seen an offensive offer or something that wasn't good enough for us. And so Epictetus is saying, again, first tell yourself what kind of person you want to be, then do what you have to do. For nearly in every pursuit, we see this to be the case. Those in an athletic pursuit first choose the sport they want, and then they do that work. And that's what Amelia Earhart does. Thanks for watching. Please click subscribe below for more content from us at Daily Stoic.